I'd like to tell you now a story. We're going to focus on this time on the power of storing. Storing is a very important tool that we can use that can reach people at many different levels. Uh, we don't have to be so concerned with the listener at where his particular level is because he will have a he or she will have an understanding. Um, uh, many people there'll be several different understandings in a story. We as Westerners often think that there's only one meaning to a story. But uh, you will find that a good share of the people in the world are telling stories to each other, and there's many different levels of understanding and uh, information in a story. So I want to tell you a story that is a true story. Um, it's a story of the impact of CDT on two Asian villages. These were apricot villages in Asia. In November of 2003, I conducted a agricultural CDT training in this Asian country. Two um, CDT workers came who we'll call Bill and Alan. These were from a village in the northern part of this country and these were villages that were apricot villages. And in this training we trained them how to seek local solutions, how to analyze their problems and things like this. They came with a box of uh, like a shoe box and they had insects pinned in this shoe box and they said what is this insect what's going on here we have not had a crop in this village for these two villages for six years the people said six years ago God cursed us with this moth and only God can remove this moth well we trained them on how to find out about this moth how to go and seek solutions how to how to mobilize the community um, for this. So Bell and Allen went back and they applied these CDT principles to the situation and they empowered the villagers. First thing is this insect, it was the Asian gypsy moth. It has, it lays egg masses on the trees in the uh, summer and fall and uh, the trees and everywhere else they lay these egg masses. So they got the, they organized the children in the village to go and um, pull these egg masses off and they collected these. They collected over 100 pounds of these egg masses and they burned them. The next thing that they did is they found within this region a local egg quarantine worker. He understood this insect. He understood the life cycle of the insect. So he came and, w and taught the people in these villages what was going to happen and when. And he also told them when the best time to spray this. So they organized themselves, they, they, they had committees that they were formed, they organized themselves to go spray these insects whenever they hatched. And so when they, the children became the um, source they, who would cry out whenever they saw little worms coming and they would climb up on the trees. And so the impact on this village was very pronounced. 60% of the men had to leave to go seek work in another country. And so here they're, they're, there's households without people. People were on the verge of starvation because the sole income of these people were this, was this apricot crop. And so these people organized and, and these uh, CDT workers helped collect the um, insect eggs and also spray the trees. And so in this process, the village discovered that they can solve their own problems. So I went and visited these villages this last July and the trees were full of fruit. The people uh, were very grateful. They, they, brought, they had themselves solved their problem and they had worked together. It took many different aspects of this. So in your home groups, I would like you to discuss what are the principles that you can tell from the story. We discussed um, how these people were being empowered, how they did it themselves. These are the kinds of principles that we want you to discuss.
from the story about the apricots, um, we can see that um, this has proven to be a very powerful story for other people to hear. We have told the story in other places, and I want to now uh, tell you how you can tie one story to the next one so that um, we can use this as a progression to talk more about uh, the things in their hearts. One of the things that we see is that, um, and we were able to talk about, is by integration of physical and spiritual, we can use the, uh, the language, what are the things that stop us in our development? And the language of the heart is one that we can use. That one is one that people, everyone wants to have a good heart. Everyone wants to do what's right in this way uh, most of the time. So I'm going to tell you the next story that I tell after they've heard this story and after they have also told this, the first story back to me. And this is a very uh, good tool. These people are storying people. A wise, a man went to a wise man and said, I would like you to kill me a sheep and I would like you to bring back the best parts of the sheep. So the wise man went and killed a sheep and brought back and laid before the man a tongue and a heart. A little bit later, the man went to the wise man again and said, I would like you to go kill me a sheep and bring back the worst parts of the sheep. So the wise man went and killed his sheep and brought back to the man and laid before him the tongue and the heart. Now the man said to the wise man, what is the meaning of this? And the wise man said, if the tongue and heart are pure, there is nothing better. But if the tongue and the heart are impure, there is nothing worse. I have used this story then to follow up because then we can talk about what is the condition of our heart? What does it take to have a pure heart? This took place in, uh, I have told these, this story in Muslim societies. It is very, they were very open. They opened up about the problems in their, in their village, how people wouldn't talk to each other, how there were problems that came up, that their hearts had become hard. So we talked about what are the stones in our, what are the things that make our hearts turn to stone? And those kinds of things we can start. So there's much power in this. And, we, and it's talking naturally about how this affects our development. So it is one that is very useful in this way. So I would encourage you, listen to the stories that are there. Collect stories. Um, Jesus told stories. It is the pattern that he had. And, um, and then after this story, I told the story of the sower, of how Jesus T talked about how the sower scattered seed under different types of conditions. And so we could ask the question, what is the condition of the heart of our village? What is the condition of our other hearts? So these are ways that stories can be used. And this is fun. And this is uh, very engaging. So I encourage you to uh, explore these things.